Hello, I'm Dr. Judy, and today I am again at the High State Fair, and I'm talking to Mona of the Back to the Wild Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. She has a really, really important message for all of you animal lovers, and I hope you hear every word of it. Hi. Uh, the animals you see, uh, see behind us here in the barred owl on my arm are not pets. Uh, we hold federal and state permits that um, make it possible for us to have these wild animals in our possession, but it's not to keep them for our own personal uh, satisfaction. Our mission is to rescue, release, and uh, you know rehabilitate and release back into the wild these beautiful creatures that belong to the wild. Our message to the public is never ever to uh, you know capture a wild animal for for a pet or just to, you know have one in your possession. It just ends up in tragedy for the animal and a lot of uh, health and safety risks for the uh, the public. Um, our mission again is to return them back into the wild where they belong, but. Um, through rehabilitation, we found that most people tend to uh, jump to conclusions in, in assuming all wild animals that are alone are abandoned or orphaned or injured in some way. Uh, we take in about 2,500 animals a year, and 70% of them truly did not need rescuing. Um, examples are fawns, uh, rabbits, raccoons, squirrels. The mothers do leave their young unattended so often um, to go out and get food. They don't want to draw attention to their offspring so they actually leave them um, you know alone during the day, fawns especially, and return to them just often enough to keep them fed. Uh, rabbits only nurse their young at dusk and dawn so you will find a nest of baby bunnies unattended. And um, we speak to about 60,000 school kids a year and help them learn when and when not to intervene with wild animals. You know, these wild animals that we have with us today are disabled. Their injuries were too severe to allow them to survive in the wild, but they are environmental indicators. They warn us of the condition of the planet. We uh, want children to understand what kind of habitats these animals depend on. Um, this is a big, uh, you know, um, message right here that 90% of our animals that are brought to us from the wild are human related injuries. It has nothing to do with, you know, nature taking its course. So things that aren't seen but are there to uh, cause a lot of problems are chemicals in the environment, everything from rat poisons and, uh, you know, rodent poisons to um, pesticides and herbicides. Uh, we just have to use a lot of discretion in how we, um, you know, coexist on this planet with our our wild uh, creatures here. You can see that you know we've had her 12 years and she's she is not a pet. Um, they will always be wild and we have to respect that. Um, it's just you know we've got a bald eagle back there. They have over a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch in their feet. She's chewing on my glove here. <laughs> I think our human nature when we see an injured wild animal is to scoop it up, um, hold it in our arms, talk to it to soothe it, and probably try to feed it. And those are all the wrong things to do. We need to um, contact a licensed wildlife center who has permits to and training to rescue it. Um, make sure you just notify a wildlife officer, park districts or police stations and they will direct you to centers nearby. So we, um, we have special methods of capturing them. The best thing you can do is put a wild animal in a dark environment like a cardboard box, closed up, do not feed it. But uh, this is a beautiful barred owl and barred owls are native right here to Ohio. They, they are year-round residents who breed here. They're not uncommon at all. And um, she weighs less than two pounds because birds have hollow bones. And they're hollow to allow them to save energy and, you know, when they're flying. So mammals have solid bones and don't need these lightweight bones, you know, like birds do for flying. They have a wonderful, uh, unbelievable, um, you know, building defense mechanism. The facial disc is actually like a satellite dish. It captures sound waves, funnels the sound into their ear openings. Owls have um, one ear up high and one ear down low. So her ears are as asymmetrically placed and that allows her to pinpoint and calculate the exact distance and level of their prey. Um, again, we do, we're required by law to return every animal back into the wild. But, uh, you know, these are some of our unfortunate permanently disabled ones.
to benefit other wildlife. Mona, I think all of us that love our animals, tame or wild, has gotten a really good message from you today. I really enjoyed your talk. I appreciate your time, and it's a wonderful job you're doing. Thank you very much. Down the Road is brought to you in part by Prince Agra, makers of Omnigen AF, advancing animal nutrition for healthy animals. And Woodruff Enterprise of Springfield, Ohio, 